You've lost all <laughs> steam, haven't you? I totally have. All right, the well, human centipede thing just fucking got me, all okay? Alright, alright. Well, I'm Ryan. And I'm Jim. And welcome to episode three of our Concept Crucible podcast without a name. I'm pretty sure that is the name. But either way. Yeah, anyways. Welcome back. It's uh, It's been fun so far filming the, the episodes. I'm, I'm super jazzed about... about I, I look forward to it. Normally I don't look forward to a lot of things, but after reviewing the film and looking at episodes one and two and stuff. I got super jazzed to do this one, so. Nice. I'm excited um, to talk about karaoke, which is what we're going to talk about. Yes, karaoke. karaoke. It's probably a little racist of me to say, but. Like, yeah, we, we should probably not do the whole yeah, we'll Japanese do pronunciation we'll, thing we'll do it anyways, uh, so. ever again. But we'll start with an icebreaker. <laughs> um, and we, we thought we would do a nice karaoke related one. So, Ryan, what is your first karaoke song you ever sang? The first song I ever sang was, and this is probably four or five years ago now, was Hero of the Day by Metallica. And uh, it's not really, I mean, they have a video for it, but it's not really one of their bigger songs. Uh, I fell in love with the song on their Symphony Metallica album. Just, I thought it was amazing. And uh, so, yeah, I got drunk. Like you do. Really drunk one time. Uh, I'd been going out to the bar, to the karaoke bar, several times, uh, but never really got myself worked up about it to go sing, so got drunk, everybody was pretty much gone out of the bar, so there's nobody there, I signed up for it on a whim, and they called me out, I got up on stage and I sang it, and I imagined it was horrible, but it felt, felt horrible, because I was, you know, still crapping myself with how terrifying it was for the first time, and then once I got, once I was finished the song, I'm like, that was amazing. I, I think I could do that again, and then so I started doing it more and more. So that was that was the first karaoke song I ever sang. And now you've been a karaoke host for how many years? Uh three years now. Nice. I, I I oddly enough became a host by winning a, a singing competition, and I'm not even that good of a singer. But I, so I, I guess the harder question is, what is your favorite karaoke song? Uh, right now I'm having a lot of fun doing. Um, Hard to See by Five Finger Death Punch. Somebody took the audio, I imagine, from either Rock Band or Guitar Hero, and then created a karaoke track out of it. So we we have a, a copy of it, um, and so that's that's kind of my favorite one to do right now. I'm really digging on the band and digging on their sound. So that's probably my favorite right now to do. Classically, I would say either a Jeremy by Pearl Jam or. Um, the Old Apartment by The Bare Naked Ladies. Those are nice. two songs that I, every time I do it, I really, really enjoy belting those ones out. Jeremy is probably my favorite warm-up song with an owl impression. <laughs> it's definitely a lot of hooing going yeah. on in there. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go into the woes. That, that, that part of the song... If you're having a good night it, and you hit those notes, the, you know, whoa, yep. oh, it feels so good. But man, when you don't hit those notes, oh, it's yeah, it's you feel else. you feel terrible. I'm trying to think, I think my first karaoke song was "Kryptonite" by Three Doors Down. It's weird that you wrote, that you can like remember these things. I remember standing on a stage in in a, in a bar and. It just my knees were shaking. All my friends were there, and I was terrified that they were going to judge me. And, I mean, they probably were, because they're my friends, and that's what friends are for. Mm -hmm. But apparently I did okay. Um, and now I sing all the time on the internet. Everyone here has probably seen me or heard me sing it. If not, you can subscribe to Wootsuit Riot and get music every Friday. Um, but my favorite one, without, without question, without even having to think about it, is Walking in Memphis by Mark Cohn. Yeah, you do that one really, really well. I love that song. I've yeah. loved that song since I heard it, and I, I used to sing it in the shower all the time. I have, mm -hmm. I have like three different versions of it on my computer, and and so when I saw it at karaoke, I was like, why would I not karaoke this song? And it is, it's just such a joyful thing for me to do. It makes me feel really good, no matter how bad a mood I'm in. And you really, you really emote a lot in that song. I notice. I mean, you emote a lot in the music that you do, but. Uh, I, I I do re recall hearing like you're really giving it all when you do that song. Makes me you, happy. And you, you improvise a lot of times in and around the melody and whatnot, but you just really seem to enjoy doing that song. Now so, yeah. we will have to do a video at Chainsaw where I, we sing songs. 
Yeah, I, I suppose. We could do I that. Suppose. Ah, That'd be I, fun. I, I don't know. Like it's um, maybe to segue into a little bit more discussion around karaoke. Um, I am very aware of the fact that I'm not actually a good singer. Like it's kind of one of the funny things about karaoke is usually people think that you have to be a good singer to do karaoke, but really you don't have to be. I mean, you have to enjoy it. I mean, why would you do it if you don't enjoy it? Obviously, who doesn't like singing, really? But I mean, when it comes to singing, I mean, I do a couple things well, and you know, how about this? Like, when it comes to singing, I don't actually think of myself as singing a song. Uh, I'm tapping into this dream that I had as a child that I wanted to become a voice actor. Believe it or not, like as a kid, <laughs> when I didn't want to be a, a Power Ranger or when I didn't want to be a superhero. I thought I would become a voice actor, and I, a lot of the times when I think of singing, I don't think of it as singing, I think of it as mimicking mm -hmm. a voice, or mimicking a, 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 a way of expressing the music, so, I mean... That I, is still singing, just, I mean, just I, so yeah, you're aware. I know, I just, I, that's why, like, I'm, I'm not the, the most tone-competent person, <laughs> it's just, I don't think of it as singing, so when people ask me, like, you know, like, what do you like to sing, or what are you good at singing, it's like, I don't know, I, I always warm up with Chili Peppers, because it's perfectly within my range, I really enjoy, um, 90s grunge, I really enjoy, uh, some of, like, the hard rock stuff, contemporary, and whatnot, mm -hmm. but... Uh, I don't have a lot of range. I don't really have a lot of highs and lows, but I can mimic things. So I can mimic a little bit of Johnny Cash. I can mimic some Foo Fighters. I suppose I mimic... that's a talent to have as a karaoke host too. Is that you, you? You can you can sing a range of things like they're supposed to be sung. Yeah, I guess would be the way to the way to think of it. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I've never been a karaoke host. I have I've kind of sort of hosted at parties, but mm -hmm. that's not the same thing at all. I mean, what what is it like on the stage versus being at the bar once you get comfortable with it it really is all about maintaining a vibe and people don't necessarily pay attention to you so i suppose in some sense when you're talking if you're gonna say anything you're trying to demand the attention of the, of the crowd but really it's um i'm i am a glorified set list you know people give me the slips and I try to keep the, the mood going and I talk a little bit in between songs to fill the void between putting in one disc and, and then taking it out and putting the next one in. So, um, yeah, it's entertainer, MC, um, DJ. It's kind of all that wrapped up into one. To be honest, when, I, when it first clicked for me, when I first started to really do it well, was when I was pretending that I was hosting a radio show. Because people would, you know, finish the song, they hand the mic back to me, and I would put on my announcer voice, and I'd say, you know, like, put your hands together for that person who just did a little bit of Foo Fighters for you, or and there's a little bit from Adele, you know. I would, I would. We can't reveal the true power of Ryan's radio voice on the on the podcast because you will swoon, and it could be dangerous if you're operating heavy machinery, or driving, or walking, or sitting upright. It's 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 a problem. When I uh, when I get sick or when I start to lose my voice a little bit and I get a little bit hoarse and I, then I try to do my announcer voice, the security guards swear that I should get a job in a strip club. <laughs> <laughs> and usually one of the one of the guards one of the guards when he gets up on stage, you know, usually I'll make the joke that he uh, if you want a private dance from him, he'll be in the VIP area the rest of the night. So it's uh, I don't know. Like I said, I pretend it's a radio show and then I just have fun with it. I mean, I enjoy. I enjoy listening to good hosts on the radio, so I just try to yeah, pretend yeah. and mimic what they do. I think a lot of my life is mimicry. I see something <laughs> on TV, I mimic it. And this is we'll, we'll do a virtue ethics topic later. <laughs> Jeez, the more we talk, the more I realize that I am just like the embodiment of virtue ethics. A little bit. Wow. Cool. Um, yeah, I mean karaoke. I guess from from my side of it, like I the 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 weird thing about me, and I, I don't know that it is entirely weird about me, is I I I don't drink. Um, so I, every, everyone who has to be drunk to get up and sing is not me. I do it all sober. And I started doing it, uh, sort of because I was really anxious about music and I wanted to do more of it because I really love making music, but it was a big source of anxiety and karaoke is kind of, uh, a safe social space to do that. I mean, there's no judgment in karaoke. Well, if people judge, they're just dicks. Yeah, they're really. they're 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 just being dicks. Yeah, um, like I always say that karaoke isn't about being a good singer. Um, it's about making sounds that make you happy, which you can do drunk or sober. 
Yeah. Although it is probably, in some ways, easier to do when you're sober because you're going to probably get better sounds. But at the same time, it's easier to do when you're drunk because you're going to worry less about the sounds that you're making. Mm -hmm. That's fair enough. I mean, I... It's easier to sing when you're drunk, or at least when you've had a few a uh, few pints in you. But for me, I'm uh, my qu- the quality of my singing goes down, and that's why when I host, I mean, I, I my work ethic, I guess, comes a little bit when I used to be on a first aid. But team. you should not work while drunk. <laughs> no, well, I mean, you, you work in a bar, and if you're not security, and if you're not, you know, dealing with money, I mean, you know, that some employees will have a, a drink or two when they're, especially the hosts. Like the hosts, there's. There's other than you being shit faced on stage. There's really nothing stopping you from drinking um, while you're working. But I find that um, whether it's my experience through first aid or whatever, I just I like having clarity of thought. I like being able to stay on top of things because I mean karaoke when you're hosting it, it's uh, you're having to balance a lot of things. You're having yeah. to balance the requests coming in, uh, both like slip wise as well as people coming up and asking you, you know, do you have this or how do I sign up. Uh, where am I in the rotation? You have to pay attention to that. You have to pay attention to the CDs that you're putting up on the wall. You have to pay attention to when the songs are coming and going. I mean, that was that was something that I really wrestled with when I first began. Is I don't I didn't know all the songs, so how do I know when the song's going to be over? Like, how do I know when to jump in and whatnot? And you, eventually, you just you get into a rhythm, but you're balancing that, and you're balancing trying to be witty, and you're balancing trying to not mess up the equipment and make sure all the sound levels are right because not only does it have to be loud enough or not too loud but it also has to be clear because um i find with female patrons with higher pitched voices you have to you have to turn down the high frequencies otherwise it just pierces really badly but then sometimes you have to crank the uh the volume on the the more quiet ones and otherwise you're not going to get anything but you can't crank it too much because you'll get feedback so i mean you're balancing all of these things it's not it's easy but it's not that easy. I mean, to do it really, really so well. So career advice, if you're looking for a mildly technical job where you're allowed to drink at work, karaoke host. Good choice, apparently. I've never met a karaoke host that I didn't like. And like as a host, like I go to other bars, meet other people. I've always met they're all always cool. I've never met one that I thought was was not. I'm not gonna talk smack about karaoke hosts on, on the air. <laughs> Are you talking about one of my coworkers? No, no, no. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I, I like it's to think a, that. It's a, it's a karaoke certain story from another city, and he mm. wasn't that much of a jerk, but he was a bit of a jerk. Uh. But, uh, no, but I, I, lo- I love, um, I, we, I have a friend who, she got over her stage fright doing karaoke. She had this incredible stage fright, and she finally dealt with it by getting up and, and singing with people and then getting up and singing by herself. And then she wound up, what, that year she spoke at a conference in front of like 10,000 people. Um, something which she swore she could never have done. And it's interesting to me that karaoke is so sort of constructive mm-hmm. in that way, is that you can you can do practical things with it beyond have fun while drinking lots of beer. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is good for me partly because I I don't do the latter part of that. No. But I don't know, I'm trying to I I, I really like the thought of, of of having it be a space where nobody judges you. I and mean, there's there's no social or there should be no social pressure to be good or to even sound nice. Um, I, I, I mean, I'm at the point where I'm so jaded that I don't care. I sing songs like Kermit the Frog, and if people don't enjoy it, it sucks to be them. No. You know, I'm, I am having fun. And, uh, if, you know, if I am singing Metallica in my best Backstreet Boys voice, uh, that is just a thing that the metalheads in the bar are going to have to deal with. Yeah, the, the wave of one erection will continue to ride through the bars. <laughs> Don't ask about One Erection in the comments, please. <laughs> You'll get us banned uh, from YouTube <laughs> and possibly from my own website. Oof. But um, no, I just I, I for me it's a space where I can play around. It's a space where I can I can mess around musically. And I mean something that I did that long long before I started making videos and and making music every day and and that was. I think a big part of what led to that is I had to be comfortable not just not just making music in front of people but making mistakes in front of people 
Mm. I definitely recall struggling my way through, I think it was Kiss from a Rose, or entirely reinventing the melody to Walking on Broken Glass, because I did not know that song as well as I thought I did. And I mean, it was important to me that I that I create something lyrically or musically interesting, mm. rather than just being like, it was the sweetest thing. Like I wanted to, I want to do something, but I don't just want to choke. Yeah, I actually messed up last week, last Wednesday. So, I mean, as a host, you try really, really hard to always be polished and professional to a certain degree. I mean, obviously, you're not. Does that go along with the drinking? Maybe I don't know, but um, but yeah, you always you always try to to. I always pick songs that I I know inside and out, so I don't even have to look at the screen, and I can do other things. I can take slips. I can adjust the sound levels. uh, So I'm comfortable with it. I can sing it. It's well within my range. But on Wednesdays when I host, and it's dead, you know, there's hardly anybody in the bar. Nobody's going to care if you pick a crap song. So I like to sometimes experiment. Flipping through the book last week, and I saw through Fire and Flames. And I'm like, I've seen this in here. I've never seen it done in here, so I don't even know if it's a decent quality um, audio. Or... Does it even have words? Oh, it does have words. It, it doesn't make you mouth the uh, the guitar solo. But, so I, I'm like, you know what? Nobody's here. I'm going to do it. Uh, and of course, I forgot the way the song started. So on my phone, between songs, I've got the phone up to my ear and I'm listening to a YouTube video of it. And as soon as I heard the first... Uh, the first um, bits of the, the lyrics i'm like okay okay i got it right so then i threw it in there and i forgot that there was a pre-chorus and i forgot what the pre-chorus sounded like i mean i kind of knew what the chorus sounded like i kind of knew what the verses sounded like i forgot entirely that there was a pre-chorus and so the priest chorus comes on and i tried to sing the the chorus melody and i realized it wasn't working <laughs> And I was, and because it's all, it's all like power metal. So, well, it's in the style of power metal. So I'm trying really, really hard to hit the high, the high vocals. It's not working. So eventually I drop down like two octaves or something to, into Jeez. something that sounds a little bit less embarrassing to mess up with. And it wasn't until after this, the guitar solo that I figured out what the, the pre-chorus is supposed to sound like. And it sounded terrible, but you know what? I prefaced it. I hedged my bet. What is it? I self-handicapped myself by saying, well, I've never done this before. This is going to be terrible. Let's do something stupid. I put it on and, oh yeah, it was, it was pretty stupid. But I think <laughs> I'm going to try to learn the song and try it again someday. So. Nice. But yeah, so just last Wednesday, I, as a host, messed up. And yet I felt comfortable given it was... It, it was dead in the sense that there wasn't a lot of uh, non-regular patrons, but mm-hmm. there was the regular group. We have a bunch of uh, grad students, and they're all I think they're almost all international students as well. It's kind of this group that they form where they do a little bit of a pub crawl. They come to my bar for a couple hours, and they move on, so they do yeah. lots of karaoke. So they were there. Um, my roommate was there because he comes out every Wednesday, and so I just felt like a, I could do stupid stuff in front of these people, and they wouldn't they wouldn't have a problem with me not being... Or not singing a song well, so it's it's definitely a good space to do that with. Fair enough. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> it's I don't know. I, I I there are lots of things I like about karaoke. I mean, I karaoke is you build some neat communities there mm-hmm. because you have people. I mean, I think there's a sense in which in which it is easy to build communities at bars because people are more relaxed when they are drunk. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, they're not only relaxed, they're having this sort of shared experience of getting up and singing songs and thinking about what songs they want to sing. And it's sort of easier to get along, especially when you can see someone do something that isn't just stand at a bar and talk. Hmm. So, I mean, when someone comes off the stage, you know, you can you can commend them on, on doing something really well or or, you know offer condolences when they go through puberty in the middle of a, a chorus, mm-hmm. which I have done before, you know, or congratulate them on going through puberty <laughs> in the middle of the chorus. Like, finally, finally this happened. Mm-hmm. I've been waiting for puberty for a long time. <laughs> but, you know, it, like, it, it gives you, it lets you see a different side of people, and, and, and in some ways I think a more vulnerable side of people than you would otherwise see at bars. Mm-hmm. 
And that, I mean, we I used to karaoke when I when I started karaoke at Ryan's bar. It was because he said, "Hey, you guys should come down because on on the nights when I'm I work, it's super dead." And I was like, "Oh," because I don't really like loud bars that are full of people because I don't like people that hang out in bars. And then I became one of those people. So um, we would go down there every week, uh, sometimes a couple times a week, and we went out with this sort of group of of community leaders and small business owners and, and people that you wouldn't expect to find out at karaoke on a Wednesday night. Um, but that is when university students are not at karaoke. And so we, we sort of had the place to ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you guys got chumming around with the owner of the bar. And, yeah. yeah. You know, you became, essentially it became a family, like a, a community and then, but more tightly knit, you know, it, be, mm-hmm. it really did become a family. and um, We had our own hashtag. Yeah, we had a hashtag and... We would we would definitely build a lot of buzz before Wednesday nights or Monday nights, whenever whichever night it was at the time. Both Monday and Wednesday tend to be dead for our bar, um, at least until midnight when the spillover line from the people who can't get yeah. into the club down the road <laughs> decide to come and crash our bar. So, uh, but yeah, so the day of you'd be sending out messages about you know what songs are we going to do or what challenges are we going to do. I mean. A lot of people in our group really had a fixation on safety dance. Oh, my God. You know, so we would egg each other on. And I had to do Shaka Khan once. I remember that. Remember when I did Shaka Oh, my God. Well, because you invented this great idea where you were like, if you if, 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 if someone tweets me a song enough, and it gets enough tweets or something like that, I'll sing it. And we are on Twitter. And we like to make Ryan do embarrassing things. Yeah, so I had to do Shaka Khan. And I realized that Prince songs, like Prince penned songs, are a lot more challenging than I give it credit for, you know. <laughs> Prince is not Prince is not a simplistic. Uh, no, no, no. When this at the same time, I think that there there are some social challenges that go along with karaoke, um, and I've noticed this probably in the past year or so. I mean, partly it's because I have done probably an unhealthy amount of karaoke at this point, but. Because it's a it's a it's an atmosphere that gives you a task, you know. Find a song, go up and sing. Find a song, go up and sing. Like especially if you if you if you are a person that that wants to sing, you know, sort of more than once or enjoys singing. Um, there's this point where I think you're torn between picking songs and singing, or or focusing on whoever is on stage singing, and being part of the community that is your table. Hmm. And there, there, there's a socially acceptable isolation in looking through the book that, you know, the, the, to find a song that doesn't carry with it, I think, the same kind of stigma as, you know, pulling out your phone in the middle of a conversation and being like, oh, well, what are we, well, what are we doing here? Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm just gonna... Oh, were you talking? Hmm. Like, you wanna, I mean... You don't want to be that person, but the book gives you a, a sort of socially acceptable escape for that. And I, I know people who are who are who sort of spend all night just looking through the book and not really interacting with people. Sometimes I am that person. If I if I wind up at a bar and I'm in a mood or I don't, you know, I'm feeling particularly introverted that night, um, and I don't feel good when I'm doing that because I know that I'm missing out. Mm-hmm. But it's so easy to do. Mm-hmm. I, and I wonder about that. Like that's, I, I think one of the, I mean, one, the, the obvious remedy for that is uh, kamikaze karaoke, where you know you don't pick songs, just you have a, a pile of songs, and then you just pull one off the top and go. Mm-hmm. But uh, that is that is a karaoke challenge that uh, many people are not up for, and I don't blame them. <laughs> it is a it is a big challenge. I ended up having to sing Achy Breaky Heart because of that. It was the first time I. Breaks. It, it was the first time I had heard the uh, the song in you know at least a decade, but somehow it other than a few of the the flourishes, it all came back. Same with any time I listen to Backstreet Boys. Um, <laughs> you know what? I, I I'll admit I don't have a problem with Backstreet Boys. Uh, we're in sync, but mostly Backstreet Boys is what gets done at our bar for one reason or another. And, and sometimes that reason. Well, perhaps, but I mean. I, I, I get annoyed when people sing it because when groups come up and they're having a lot of fun, you know, I I prefer a little bit more f- like fidelity to the song. I prefer uh, I prefer the lyrics to be a little bit closer, especially because a lot of times if you're not paying attention, you'll be singing what you think is is what the 
the chorus and lines are supposed to be, but they're giving you the lines for whoever has the lead. So they're singing, you know, off beat from everything else. And so you look up and you're trying to read the lyrics and you realize that you're singing the chorus in the background, but then there's something going on in front of it and you have no <laughs> idea what's going on. So usually those kinds of things annoy me, but that's only because I've heard it so many times. I like, I appreciate it when people like really try hard to nail the song as it is. They don't have to nail it well. They don't have to be on tone. You, on you just want them to try. I just want to hear. I want to. I want to. I want to know that they're paying attention to the song. Like they're not just singing it because it's nostalgic, but they're really singing it because it is. You know, like there's there's a cool element to the song. I mean, what was it? I think it was. Uh, and you can rediscover things about songs that you didn't realize were there. Another Backstreet Boy song. I think it was Larger Than Life. I'm sitting there, you know, just listening to it. And Larger Than Life is totally an NSYNC song. No, it's Backstreet Boys. It was off Millennium. I can even remember he, the music he, video. He knows what album it's on. Never mind. I, yeah. uh, uh, larger Than Life. But in the middle of the song, I, I'm pretty sure it was Larger Than Life, but Larger Than Life is definitely Backstreet Boys. But all of a sudden, the song breaks out into a guitar solo. I didn't even realize Backstreet Boys had guitars, guitars in their well, music, let alone They don't, they don't have a guitarist. So, they don't have a guitar. Well, I mean, they would probably live, but it all of a sudden, the song just breaks out into... A, one this, of them's out in the front. Yeah, it, it was shredding. I mean, for it, those of you listening to the podcast, I'm doing a wicked air guitar right now. Yeah, it's no worse than Flea over the the Super Bowl. <laughs> if you were following the, the I was social not. media, but anyways, uh, so yeah, you rediscover things about songs, or um, when your life experiences, uh, like you you experience new things in your life, you go back and you listen to songs. And you and you read the lyrics and you discover things about the song or you listen to the intent. Like I'm not gonna lie. Until I got into a stable, committed relationship, ACDC's "You Shook Me All Night Long" had no impact on me. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. It had no impact on me. And then once I got into a stable, committed relationship, I went back and I read. I was reading along with the lyrics while other people were singing, and I'm like, "Oh my god, I know what that's like. I understand it now." So I mean. When you go back and you revisit these songs, and that's one of the beautiful things about karaoke. I'm gonna I'm gonna just come out right and say it. the beautiful thing about karaoke is it exposes you to the music in a in a way that you may not have had before when you're listening to the radio or on the CD. Hell, even reading through the liner notes on in the album. Yeah, I mean, you you re you come at the, the songs from a new perspective when you have to sing and when you have to pay attention to what's going on. And that was how I learned that Mumford and Son songs are really screwed up. I just um, I love the Disney gif where the guy's like playing the mandolin like this, and it's basically just every Mumford and Sons song. Yeah, but I, I actually this wasn't from karaoke. This was from playing at the Geek Art Show. Mm. I I, uh, I threw a couple of Mumford and Sons songs in my in my songbook because I used to play them with a band, and I thought, oh, these are pretty straightforward, and I know the tune, so I can play them because I need like ninety minutes of music. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, I think I had like two and a half hours of music, but. Um, and I, so as I'm singing this song, and I'm, I'm, it's, it's sort of the first time I've really sung it, I'm reading the lyrics, I'm like, this is totally, this is messed up. White Blank Page? White Blank Page is, is all about a very unhealthy um, fixation about being friend-zoned uh, in a very, un, you know, someone reacting very, in a very unhealthy way to being put in, quote-unquote, the friend zone, which for those of you listening or watching, is not a real thing. We'll do a separate episode about that. Nice guy syndrome. Yeah, yeah. we don't talk about that. No. Because <laughs> it's not a real thing. No. But, well, the syndrome is, but, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, that was just, and I, like, I really enjoy the, I really enjoy the tune, and I really enjoy the, the melody and, and playing it, but at the same time, I'm just like, I don't really feel comfortable singing this song, because I don't like singing problematic songs. Mm. Kaylee and I spent an awful lot of time when writing music, trying to, to make it non-problematic. <laughs> because apparently it's a really important thing for me. I don't want to be... I want to have music that's inclusive and, and also sort of joyful. And, and Mumford and Son songs are not that. No. I mean, they sound fun and bouncy. Yeah, and they, and and they get people they up are. and dancing. To be fair, I don't know that many of them. Yeah. Um, and they, they, and they're, they're good songs. But I just... It's, it's just... Yeah, and I don't... But I never noticed I was uncomfortable with them. Until I started seeing the lyrics, mm-hmm. and so, uh, sometimes you just you, you you pick a song and you don't even, you realize that you didn't even really know what it was about, and at that point you start thinking, man, is, it, is this really a really good idea. I've had a few songs where I'm like, is 
should I really like this song? I mean, because uh, you don't you don't always think about it. You don't always listen to the words when you're I mean when you're when you're just listening to it in the car or you hear it you know on the internet or whatever. Um, but when you really yeah when you get the chance to really interact with it, it uh it cha it can change the way that you see a song. And sometimes for the better, and sometimes not. Fun fact about me: when I when I learn to sing along with songs, a lot of times I'm not even paying attention to the lyrics. I'm like I know what the words are, but I don't pay attention to what the lyrics actually are. And and sometimes, again through karaoke, when I when I start reading the lyrics, I realize what the song's actually about, and it's just like, oh, that's deep. Like or that's 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 some pretty heavy stuff going on. It's something that all I'm doing is again I'm mimicking the lyrics. I'm mm -hmm. singing along. I know the words in a superficial level to be able to 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 sing along with it, but I'm not actually comprehending what the the words <laughs> mean or what the when they're strung all together. I guess maybe that's what it is. I'm memorizing each individual word, but I'm not paying attention to them when they're yeah all to the sort together. of context. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I never, I hadn't thought about it until until I hit those Mumford and Sons songs, and then I remember coming back on the second day and just being like, "Nope, not doing these." Also, I needed to practice them more, but that's different. That's a whole different issue. I mean, I love singing. My 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 sort of karaoke passion is singing bad songs. Um, I really I really love Rebecca Black's Friday. Mm -hmm. Love singing that song. I love singing that song regularly. I, I have a video of it that I can link somewhere here ish. But um, it will also be in the show notes for those of you who are listening. But um, yeah, it's 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 one of those things where, um, admittedly, I also have a special magical bond with Rebecca, Rebecca Black. <laughs> I spoke with her for like almost a minute and a half <laughs> while I was at VidCon. Um, so yeah, I mean, she's coming to my birthday party. She's not coming to my birthday party. My I think so. No. <laughs> I got excited for she's, just one reason. She's on the list of people who are who are not coming to my birthday party, along with Bill Nye and a bunch of other people. But she's invited. You know, one of the favorite, one of my favorite things that you've ever done at karaoke, because um, you completely flipped it on its head. So, I, as a karaoke song, I hate "Don't Stop Believing." I I absolutely hate that as a karaoke song. It's actually like. I have nothing against Journey. I, I like it's actually a it's a good it's a good pop song. Um, uses the the famous chords. Yeah. And so the one time you sang it, and I was on security. I was I was guarding the bathrooms because that's what I did when I first started security. I think there's a serious job. I've seen those lines. Yeah, no, I I was pretty good at traffic control because we have really tiny washrooms. So you know, I was really good at waving people in and stopping people from going in. Yeah, it's, it's pretty small. Um, so you got up on stage and I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, there goes Jim. And then I hear the opening piano bit for, for don't stop believing. And I'm just like cursing you under my breath. I'm like, how dare you do this to me? And you start singing it. And then it's not fun unless somebody's crying. Yeah. And then you switched it up and you did your med uh, medley. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I, um, like I, you didn't write that. That's something no, that, that was, somebody else that was done. by, uh, that, that, that medley, um, cause G, cause journey is a, or, um, don't stop believing is a four chord song oh. and axis of awesome does this amazing yeah. medley of, of four chord songs that I have pottered with and I've added to and I, and I've subtracted from, but it's just, it's really fun to sing and they're fun songs to mix together in any, in any way. I have a bunch of videos where I've pottered with that. I did some of it during Vita last year. I will put that link over Ryan's face and oh. also in the show notes. No, right over your face. Oh, Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, and it's, it's super fun to do at karaoke, partly because nobody's expecting it. Everybody's yeah. expecting to get one thing, and they get something completely different. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, when you when you broke out into that medley, and then you eventually looped it back around and finished the song, uh, that was like that was probably one of my the m the most favorite things I saw, uh, you, at least you do at Chainsaw, because I've also seen... Uh, oh, I don't remember his name off the top of my head. I think his name's Neil. He's he's on a he's on a TV program here in town. But anyways, I saw him do. Uh, oh, Neil Neil Headley. Yes, yes. He came out a few times, and that guy he's got a, he's got some pipes on. Him Neil, as well, well Neil, Neil used to do radio. Neil was Neil's been yeah. in bands. Neil's been around. He's a really great guy. So he he's probably he and there's one other guy who used to be a karaoke host at our bar 
when it was the previous bar because we've changed names once uh, <laughs> since I've started going there. Either as a patron. the bar went through a very rough marriage. Well, whatever. Uh, so yeah, Neil and then this other guy. Um, those are the only two people I've ever heard do that song any kind of justice by trying to stick to the original, the original yeah, I can't. song. I but, it's so it's your, yours is my, my favorite rendition overall. They are my favorite performance. I am, I am, <laughs> my heart is warmed by that. Yeah, because I absolutely hate that song. <laughs> as, as a karaoke song, just, uh, when we, we lost that disc for a good 6 to 12 months. No, 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 it, it was it legitimately, it. Uh, Simon, one of the hosts, Simon took it out, and dropped it by mistake and it happened to fall no i believe simon when he did this <laughs> it happened to fall behind the stage yeah and so we lost it and it, it was it was wonderful it was glorious we didn't have to listen <laughs> to that song every single night so if we had some you know now that my heart is warmed and we have lost a disc if we had to um give some advice about karaoke my advice would be to do it um, whenever you go to karaoke and you have the opportunity to sing, you should sing because you, whenever you have the opportunity to sing, you should sing. Mm-hmm. Singing is good for you, even if you're bad at it. And karaoke is a great place to do it, even if you're bad at it. Or even, more importantly, even if you think you're bad at it. More, most of the time, you're probably okay, but we always think we're worse at things than we are. It's until we've had a few drinks and then we think we're way better at things than we are. But we're not. No. Well, you you are because you never drink. Well, yes, but that's exactly why is because I don't want to get overconfident. I'm more afraid of my overconfidence <laughs> than I am of anything else. It'll be your undoing. Yeah, it will be <laughs> one day. Uh, so I guess my advice would probably be: Is it don't sing Journey? Uh, no, that's a request. <laughs> that would be a request. Please don't sing Journey. Uh, and if you're singing Spice Girls, don't woo. Uh, during the song, woo! Yeah, exactly. Same with Shania Twain, but that's kind of built woo! into it. You can't, you can't avoid it. But anyways, I would say my advice for karaoke would be: um, it's karaoke. It's you're not there to be a good singer. I mean, if you happen to be gifted with tone or a good singing voice, all the better. You know, because you'll be able to do more interesting things with the music. But remember, karaoke is all about going up and having fun and singing those songs. There are going to be people who who will boo or will say nasty things, but they're not there for the right reasons. We have a word for those people. Uh, Douchebags or chuds. We call them chuds at our bar. Nice. I like that word. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good solid descriptor. They're just underbelly people. They, they go out to, I mean, what kind of person goes out to a bar when a person earnest in earnest gets up on stage to sing and then you boo their effort. They're not making money. They're there. They're they're singing a song usually because like it's a song that they like and they want to sing. Occasionally, <laughs> some people sign them up for tracks to screw with them. Whatever. That's that's fine. But usually, people get up on stage and they do their best to to do something or sing a song that they like. And then some dick in the back is booing them either because he doesn't like the song or because you know you happen to not sound like the person who sang the song originally. So the main thing I would say as a karaoke host. Is just go up there. Remember, you're not you're not supposed to be a professional singer. You're supposed to just go up and have fun, and then support other people while they're singing. You know, make sure you clap after every single person. It doesn't matter if they sounded beautifully, if they sounded like Adele, or if they sounded like Skeletor trying to trying to work their way <laughs> through a song. It doesn't matter what they sound like. It doesn't matter how well they did relative to the original song. You clap for them and show them support and just have a good time. So that's what that's my advice. Come to Concert Crucible to find out more about how to have a good time. I'm just kidding. We have no idea how to have a good time outside of this podcast. Uh, half, uh, half the podcast is about being drunk and the other half is about being sober, I guess. Pretty much. <laughs> the yin and yang. <laughs> the, the yin and yang of having fun. There we go. What do you like to do? I like to get drunk and go to bars. What do you like to do? I like to be sober and go to bars. Anyway, yeah. we will see you guys in two weeks. Yeah. Anyways, my name's Ryan. And I'm Jim. And we're signing off. Stay awesome. I'm like sharing a butt with you at this point. <laughs> Two men, one butt. Yeah. Well, I got That's, a bad uh... ass. <laughs>